let's talk about the um, plot of, of all, all tomorrow's parties. Can you give me just a little idea of where it comes from? I open on a character named Colin Laney, who is a sort of chemically psychic analyst of, of huge amounts of, of internet information. And he's, his circumstances have been very drastically reduced since he was last seen, and he is living in a cardboard box in a, a Tokyo subway station, but it doesn't affect his, uh, his professional abilities because he's as wired up as anyone else in this world is. And he has seen, as, his, uh, as he sort of becomes progressively more prescient for various reasons, he's seen that something's going to happen. And he's been telling people that, uh, in effect, the world is, as we know it is, is about to end. And he has some anxieties around that, so he starts moving other characters around and, and they eventually converge in San Francisco where in a in a very mysterious way the world does end. Although everyone gets up the next day and has breakfast and goes to work. Which I think is what happens when the world does end and, and I I think worlds do end. And I think ours has a couple of times in, in the last few hundred years, and we haven't noticed. Leany sees a nodal point coming, and the book sort of has that same structure because the characters start off in vastly different places and all <coughs> all converge. Yeah, that's an interesting point. It's it's nodally it's nodally structured, and and you can't. I had a kind of perverse sense while I was writing this one that there is a, a deus ex machina happening <laughs> that sort of un, would be unforgivable in any other in any other context. But it, in fact, it's excused by it's excused by the conceit that these characters are somehow being driven or drawn by. This nodal point, so they will all—they all have to wind up in the same room at the end of the book, and then the 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 event takes place, and they they cross. I think for me, what happens at the end of the book is they they cross a sort of event horizon. They they enter what some futurists are, have been calling a, a technological singularity. It's like they go down a, a black hole uh, that consists of an emergent technology so powerful that nothing on the other side of it will be remotely recognizable, would be remotely recognizable to us if we could see it. And whatever we have become on the other side of it would look back and probably not be able to recognize us as human, which is... A quite a con quite a concept, not my not my own, but one that one that I've taken fairly seriously. Take it seriously, but on the other hand, it also happens at the equivalent of the quickie mark. Yeah, it happens in uh, it happens in basically in effect in every Seven Eleven on on the planet at, at the same time and and isn't recognized. <laughs> Isn't of course isn't isn't recognized for for what it is. Do you ever get worried that that your books get will get dated, or do you just consider that it's both uh, it's unavoidable and I look forward to them acquiring that patina of peculiar charm that I go to period SF for and because it's unavoidable that they will acquire it. The fascinating thing is watching watching them watching them acquire it. I, well, my favorite uh, favorite experience of that so far is is the the uh, increasingly poignant uh, existence of the Soviet Union in Neuromancer, my first novel published in 1984, I, I could imagine 
a world in which a mid 21st century world in which everything had changed except for that and if someone had come to me in 1982 or 1983 and said look I've got this brilliant idea if you really want to weird people out just say that the Soviet Union sort of dried up and blew away sometime in the 90s because the, the system just didn't work and maybe you could have the whole country run by like like the mafia or the military or something. And I would have said nobody would believe that. Yeah. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have done it. I would have considered it and said that's too weird. They won't. Nobody will buy that. And but that's what happened. The book is All Tomorrow's Parties. I'm speaking with the author William Gibson and All Tomorrow's Parties, published by Putnam and Penguin Press. <laughs>